Oh, yes, I see. Clinging to lofty dreams in this dying world. More's the pity. It must come from one most foolish indeed. Wouldst thou not agree? <laughs> What's the undead legion doing with a cold such as this? I'd heard one of the crystal sages had sided with Farron's abyss watchers. I suppose it must be true. You should know, this coal is imbued with magic. First one I've ever seen. Hardly a surprise, is it? I've never been one for books or wise men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. This coal is from the Undead Legion. Used to forge the weapons of Farron's Abyss Watchers. A fine prize. I'm honored to be endued with it. Now I'll be equipped to infuse special gems. Praise the gods, eh? Time to put this brawn to use. <laughs> Yes, here we are. It's been long indeed. With this, I can teach you more sophisticated pyromancies. Splendid. I can boast I am your tutor a little longer. <laughs> Do not be gone for long. What is a teacher without a pupil? <laughs> ah. ah, I know you. Been some time since we met in person. I just dropped in to see how she's getting on. Now, what are you playing at with this circus? This cesspool of doddering old folk and degenerates. Couldn't be better. She must fit in perfectly here. <laughs> You oft the Lords of Cinder, the Undead Legion. So that's how they're delivered to their thrones. <laughs> I pity the sorry souls. Is that really Lordship's last reward? failed to thank you for helping them find their final resting place. Aha, that so. Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls 3 Dialogue Edition. Now, just before I started recording, I went back to, um, oh, uh, the area we were last time. I just picked up a few items that I had missed. Very good. Nothing very exciting, to be honest. The most interesting thing was that there was a few of the dead mushroom fellas from, uh, Dark Souls 1. And man, it's been a while since I've recorded. Let's see, so right after I finished recording last time, oh, I got, um, I don't know, I guess I came down with a cold or something, but I had a really sore throat. Couldn't really talk much above a whisper for a few days. Then also had been looking after Cat, which I'm still looking after. And uh, that made recording at night basically impossible because the cat would just be making noises, but right now she's just sleeping on the windowsill. But um, yeah, we are back in the high wall. You might be wondering why. Well, if you remember, we got... Did we get a key from... Uh, what's his face? Leonard or whatever. I always want to call him Leonard, but... Yeah, look at this guy, he's like, oh, I'm the 
coolest star wraith. I beat 100 Lothric Knights. Let's see, can he beat one more? Look at that poise, that's pretty incredible. He has more poise than the Abyss Watchers. I was hoping that would kill him. Left him with like one health. Uh, and he has a red eye orb, which we have zero use for whatsoever. But uh, yeah, let's um, continue on with our quest. Yes, more than a week since I recorded. <laughs> which, uh, as always, I don't like having these big gaps when I'm doing something like this, as it just makes me forget what I was up to, you know? But I uh, like the good old notched whip. But yet, yeah, today we're going to continue on with um, Cathedral of the Dip. Cathedral Johnny Depp, where we must fight Saint Amber of the Herd. Goodness me. Um, well, that's where we ran earlier. I think that's actually the way to go, too. Because I only popped in there for like one second, didn't I, to grab something. Could go that way, but you know, we'll go we'll go the loop around. And then this will be a, we'll just get into the cathedral proper today. Mmm, souls. Hand them over. And uh, this area, the cathedral of the deep, is where you're able to respec. And uh, we'll probably do that as I really don't need this much vitality. Um, 32 vitality, yeah, I don't need that much at all whatsoever in any world. I mean, I did, but now I don't because I have Havel's Ring. Now, Havel's Ring we got from transposing the uh, Stray Demon Soul we picked up last time with... Um... <laughs> His name is not Ludwig. <laughs> Ludlith of Kurland. You know what? I thought there was actually an item down there. But I don't see one. Oh, you know what? That's probably the one I was thinking of. It's all good. Oh, you know what we do need here, though? We need ourselves a torch. Torturino. To kill the undead arenos. Zombinos. I hate it. You know, sometimes there's just ways people talk, and it irritates you. I get that a lot. You know, I'm sure there are people out there who find me irritating. The way I talk. You know, that's fine. Because, uh, you never have to hear or see me talk if you don't want to. If you click on my video. Most of the time, that's your choice. I say most of the time because, you know, it, it is conceivable that someone has been strapped to a chair and forced. It's very unlikely, but... Yeah, that's why we have the torch, by the way. To burn off the maggots. Get down. Woo! The water. I could go for a swim. I've not been swimming in so long. I bet I don't even remember how to swim. I would just sink and die. The boy is just not buoyant. Speaking of people getting annoyed at silly things. Seeing people get annoyed at that pun from Final Fantasy XIV was baffling. But uh, yeah, for me, it's um, the way people talk on Twitter a lot of the time is just... Aggravating. I don't even really know how to describe it. It's like... <laughs> how to put it? White girl from California who speaks like she's... I don't know. How would you put it? From the hood. Speaking like a gangster or something. I don't know. It's, it's very cringy to me. And it's also the sort of people you would expect not to be doing that, because 
those are the people who are always, you know, complaining about things like uh, cult cultural appropriation and whatnot. So you would think they would be, you know, sensitive to that. <laughs> you would think. But when have people on Twitter ever been anything but hypocrites? These enemies, by the way, can drop what I would consider the best boss killing weapon in the game. And is it? I don't know. Oh, hey. That's pretty lucky. Yes, the Warden Twin Blades. Uh, I mean, I can equip them for a sec, but I don't think I can even really use them. Oh, I can, because I got some dexterity. But, uh, yeah. These weapons have bleed on them. If you go look at my um, boss guides for Dark Souls 3, these are primarily the ones I used. Incredible weapons. I almost want to use them now just because it's been so long and they were cool and fun, but I'm not going to. You know what? Here we go. Remember the dra the the dragon, the um, the giant. He is watching me get bitch slapped. Uh, he's around. I'm trying to see where he is. Surely we can see his tower from here. Oh, I'm bleeding. Oh, is that him? Yeah, there he is. Just about see him up there. He's helping. I help any time. He did not make the wah sound. I hope he didn't. Uh, irritating enemies. Just... I'm I'm really hoping Oh goodness. The Dark Dark Souls Elden Ring is not like Dark Souls 3. If it, you know, controls like it, I'm fine. But so much of Dark Souls 3 just feels really uninspired and like scraping the bottom of the barrel for ideas, like Ooh. What if we had these zombie dudes who infinitely respawn and kind of make you maggoty? And then the orcs complain because they ain't had nothing but maggoty bread for three stinking days. But yeah. I... Ugh, I just don't. I just don't. And I know. I said i try and be less negative. And there is a lot to appreciate about this game. But I don't think there's inherently things bad about criticising things. I know you it's probably not what you really want to hear in a let's play, but... I can't help it, you know, these are my thoughts on the game, and I'm not going to pretend to like something. That's a cool shield, though. The, um, Pursuer's Great Shield from Dark Souls 2. Number one reason to play offline, because of this ladder right here. People always put in stuff there. Bloodstains, specifically. And when they put them there, it makes it just an ordeal to get down. Or more of an ordeal than it should be to go down a ladder, at least. Now we can loop around over here. That ain't Falco. It is weird they brought the torch back in this game for virtually no reason. I mean, there's this thing, but I can't remember any times you really need the torch other than this, and even then you don't need the torch for this. It is pretty funny watching these disgusting Resident Evil 5 enemies freak out though, right? 
Saint Tree Bell Vine a chime. This game has uh, chimes and the other things. The other things. Talismans. Talismans. Chimes are from Dark Souls 2. Talismans from Dark Souls 1. And they made them like distinct. That was a nice thing, giving them like different perks or benefits. Hello, Crystal Man. How about I give you a Crystal Slam? I forgot that's not an overhead. <laughs> but it's okay, it's okay. But you know, at least we're done with one of the worst areas of the game. And I, once we get inside the cathedral, I like it a lot more than the outside. Which again, it's just because that one enemy. And then they're not even really that obnoxious. They're just kind of stupid. Crystal lizards. What do you think will be crystal lizards in Elden Ring? I mean, by the time, by the time this Let's Play is finished, like the final part is out, maybe it will be Elden Ring time. No, maybe not. I don't know, actually. I don't know how I'm going to space the release of this, to be honest. Oops, I forgot about that. Damn. You ever die with a delay. He sure did. He certainly was enjoying himself living in that crystalline... What would you even call that? A... a den? No, not a den. A nest? Hang on. I saw a thing there. How do I get that item, and why don't I remember how to get that item? Okay, don't worry, I think it's literally the most obvious thing in the world, which would be why I don't remember how to get it, because there's no thought into getting it. <laughs> For some reason I was thinking, do I have to drop down from, like, the rafters? Because I don't remember that. But we can loop around over here. You know, I feel like Dark Souls 3, whilst it was a little bit eh, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, whilst it was a little bit eh, I think they recharged their mm, batteries, shall we say. Because, you know, Poison by Ring. After this, we got Shadows Die Twice in, was that 2019? I think it was. Um, we've not had, we didn't have anything else, right? It was Dark Souls 3, Shadows Die Twice, and then Elden Ring. I, yeah, I think that's the way it went. If I'm not mistaken. And... It seemed Shadows Die Twice is a good game. I have never let's played it. Maybe I, you know, maybe I'll do that. Once this one's done, I'll see how life is going and uh, maybe we'll give that a shot. You know what? I'm getting aggravated right now because I know where that door is, but I'm being stupid. There we go. Sometimes, after we recorded uh, last time, me and my friends, uh, they kept playing for a bit and I swapped to another character and played with them and man, you forget what PvP in this game is like. It's non-stop invasions. It's like past a certain point, it's like, we don't care, we don't want to PvP. And the invaders are always like taking half an hour to like run away constantly. It's like. We're not trying to gank you, we're literally just trying to play the game. So, well, you know, invasions are part of the game. It's like, yeah, I get that logic in Dark Souls 1. 
See, Dark Souls 1 was a very different experience. And after that, they realized that, yes, yeah, some people, whilst they might enjoy the randomized co-op sort of... Just the, the random online, like, meet strangers, play with them for a bit. Yeah, no, that that's fine and all, but a lot of people literally just want to play the game and just play through it with their, their friends, you know? And in that case, PvP just becomes tedious for, I mean, pretty much everyone involved, to be honest. I'm sure the invaders don't enjoy constantly invading people with, you know, th squads of three. I couldn't even see that, because my giant head was in the way. Which happens. I... don't know what I can do about this guy right now. We'll, we'll just ignore him. He's, he's fine. He tried to shoot, but he cannot shoot. I never really understood what these nail things were for. But... I never got upset about them. Okay, buddy. Look at you, you've got a flaming sword and then you're just sitting there. Geometry. You know, I've completely forgotten what I was talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, PvP. And it's like, yeah, no, I... I thought it was a really cool gimmick in, uh... What? Oh, you come... You come down for more, have you? Where's the... There you are. Yeah, it's like, I just hope Dark Souls, I keep calling it Dark Souls, Elden Ring. I hope Elden Ring, the PvP is going to be better than this game. Controversial opinion, I don't think they should even have invasions. Or have them like as an opt-in thing. Because yeah, at certain points, like no, I'm, I'm kind of done with invasions. They're, they're more tolerable when the game has just come out. But when you're just trying to play Dark Souls 3 right now, like four years after release or whatever, five years even. And you're just getting invaded by all these dudes who've been PvPing for five years straight. It's like, you know, they, they know like all the meta stuff. They know all the like obnoxious strategies to use. And PvP in this game is just not good. I'm sorry. Like... And that's the thing, like, if you criticize something about Dark Souls, no matter what it is, people will just assume you are bad. Which is a very... flawed mindset to have. Like, uh, I made a video a while ago saying... about how I don't like the boss Midir. Because I don't like him, I don't think he's a well-designed boss. Oh, look at these galaxy brain strategies right here. Pivot. Pivot. Yeah, no, I don't like Midia. I don't think he's a well-designed boss. He looks cool, but that's about all I can say for him. And people just go, oh, you just don't like him because you can't beat him. Now, for starters, he was beaten in that same video. And then I also, you know, I mentioned it in the video, I'm only using that footage, because it's the only footage I had of that boss. Can I jumping slap this man? You know, I can't remember, but it doesn't really matter. Wah! Wah! That's a noise I would make if I were ambushing a man. Wah! But yeah, no, I don't like Medea. I don't think he's a good boss. Cool. And uh, the reasons I don't like Medea, by the way, I think he has too much health, and maybe you're thinking, he's a dragon. He, of course he has to have a lot of health. Yeah, you know who else has a lot of health? Slave Knight Gale. But you know the difference between them? Wow, that was a pretty amazing combo those guys just did. I'm down. They deserve it. Now, where was I? Oh yes. Uh... Yeah, Slave Night Gale. He, he's fine. 
What even triggers them? That's so good. I don't even remember that ambush. Like, I know there's a guy there. I honestly didn't remember the other guys dropping down like that, though. But anyway. Yeah, Slave Knight Gale has mm, two, maybe three phases. Let's say two distinct phases and three real phases. Medir, on the other hand, my dear, my do. I like when this game just doesn't do what you press on the button, like with the camera lock on. Anyway, he has, you could either say three phases or two. Technically, he has two phases and two encounters. First encounter on the bridge. Second encounter is where he has two phases, right? But they're not distinct. He gets like one new attack and that's more or less it. I just find him tedious because of that. If Medea had something distinct between his different phases, I would have a lot less issues with that fight. But people seem unable to accept that opinion. You know, people tell me, oh, I don't like the Nameless King fight. And, you're, and I go, okay, I understand why you don't like it. I like it. But a lot of people just are unable to accept opinions that differ from their own, and I don't understand why that's so prevalent, especially in the Dark Souls franchise. It just... it baffles me at times, you know? Was it worth it? I don't know. Probably not. That guy's got some goofy legs. Alright, you warden. Have at me. Okay. Genuinely forgot they do that. And... No, I... I mean, maybe you even heard me that I pressed forwards and I pressed right trigger. But the game was like, you know what? You actually didn't. It's all good. There's another game, actually, that has a black dragon in. Oh, he... You know, that makes sense that he has a... Uh, stagger on his charge. Again, I just forgot. Yeah, um, Alatrion from uh, specifically Monster Hunter Iceborne. Hate that boss. Okay. Can't stand it. And people were like, oh, you just don't like it because uh, you have to use a different build. It's like, no, I'm, I'm fine with that. I just feel like they shifted so drastically and like punished players for trying to do things that they themselves wanted. Like, ooh, I was really hoping I would get that guy with the axe. Not kill him, but like, you know, stagger him just a little bit. Anyway, let's see if that even works. It does. Farewell, axe man. But that's the thing. They put in all these mechanics in Iceborne or in World or whatever. And then they made it so a lot of them barely work with the Latrian. Yes, you can clutch claw him. Yes, you can use temporal mantle on him. But the fact that it's like you can put your temporal mantle on like the the millisecond he's in an attack, you can move away from him, put your mantle on, and by the time you've put it on, he'll do another attack that um, instantly gets rid of it. And his openings to Clutch Claw are so insanely strict. I just don't like that boss. I like Fatalis a lot more. Anyway, when we were playing the last time, we got here, and uh. I don't remember, was it Matt? I think it was Matt. He was like, hey giant! I think he shot him or something and the giant just stood up and just slapped Matt to death. Let's see if I can recreate what happened. 
See, I don't have any projectiles because I tossed them all at the dragon in uh, Doug's world. Whee! Okay, cool. Yeah, look how mad he gets. Kills. And his hand is longer than anything. Yeah, get out of here. You too, slime. Not gonna bother with the slime because, I mean, they're weak to fire. As you see, but yeah, I uh, need fire bombs. You know, what, maybe I'll go back to the shrine after this. That's gross. Go back to the shrine and get some fire bombs. Uh, something dodgy happens here. I think this is like a poison trap. It's the sewer system. <laughs> sure. This room always reminds me of uh, Resident Evil Four. There's a room almost. Okay, I'm not going to say identical, but there's a room in Resident Evil 4 that reminds me of this one a lot in the castle area. If you've played RE4, you will probably know what I'm uh, referring to. Sweet, Deacon Robe, my favourite. You know, we are almost done with this part. Oh, are we done right now? Is this the shortcut? I think it is. Wow. Wow. Owen Wilson. Remember Owen Wilson? He was in, uh... That Disney thing recently. The Loki series. You know what? That was only, like, two months ago at time of... Well, me recording this, I want to say. Something like that. I've forgotten 90% of it. It was... <laughs> It was a bit better than Captain Falcon and the... <laughs> Captain Falcon. Cap... You know, the... Flying man and punching robot man one. That one was... Bleh. But, yep. Yeah, we've returned to the cleansing chapel. So we're going to call it right here. Next time we will continue. I'm going back to the shrine to uh, pick up some firebombs and whatnot. Take care.